This is the Las Vegas Sphere, a massive 366 foot tall, 516 foot wide building wrapped almost entirely in LED screens. After years of construction and a budget of over $2 billion, the Sphere finally opened its doors on September 29th, 2023. And ever since then, I've been plagued with one question. Why? So come with me on this journey to the center of the Sphere as I try to find out. So, this all started back in February when I was watching the 2023 Super Bowl and this commercial came on the air. Meteorological agency issued a tsunami warning. First red warning for extreme heat. It has declared a drought emergency. It followed a few fans of the band U2 from around the world getting transported to the desert, all with this massive orb descending upon Earth. It then shows lead singer Bono and the other U2 members in the desert with them. So, are we doing this? Uh, we'd be mad not to. Lastly, it shows this baby on the floating orb, and it talks to the viewer. Ah, <sighs> I just assumed it was an ad for a U2 tour, and I'm not the biggest fan of U2. Not that I dislike them, I just don't think about U2 at all. So months went by, and I didn't think about this ad or Bono even once. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, the sphere just appeared. Like many others, I was not aware that the sphere was being made. So one day, the internet was just flooded with this massive glowing orb in the Vegas skyline. Twitter was full of videos about all the crazy things that the sphere was putting on its massive display, like an emoji guy, or an eyeball, or a basketball, or the moon, and much more. And the reception seemed to be mixed, because on one hand, the sphere is just undeniably a crazy concept and execution of an idea. But on the other hand, getting to take up a skyline of a city with whatever a company wants to put on screen feels pretty dystopian. If you don't want to look at what they have to show you, it is forced within your view of the horizon. It's an eyesore. And it became a lot more of an eyesore when all we were seeing were the advertisements put on the sphere, like Clash of Clans with Samsung or Google, Meta, Xbox, Stranger Things, Fortnite, PlayStation, and many more. Just months into the sphere existing, all we ever see of it is what kind of cool new ads are being put on it. So is the sphere really that great? Is the sphere so cool that it would make me want to stare at an advertisement? These are the type of questions that I'm searching for answers for. And our search begins in the city that never sleeps. The Big Apple, Burbank, California. While talking about the Sphere with a friend, shout out James, he let me know that the company that makes the Sphere actually has their own mini Sphere in Burbank, California. Meaning I could find out just how cool the Sphere really is with just a short drive. Heading to Burbank, I could not be more excited. I couldn't believe how convenient it would be to get my questions answered. What incredible luck to have a mini sphere just 30 minutes from me. And I got to see all the famous landmarks that Hollywood has to offer. Like the Five Nights at Freddy's billboard. Or the Trolls billboard. Or the Five Nights at Freddy's bus. And a few minutes of driving later, we spotted it. Wait, hold on, is there a tarp over it or something? Where's the screen? Where's the big sphere visuals? So we drove out here and uh, there's a tarp on it. So. Unfortunately, after doing some Googling, the mini sphere in Burbank is only designed to show what happens on the inside of the sphere. I got all excited to see a sphere and nothing happened. I was blue sphered. Tony, Chrissy, and I had planned to go to Ikea after seeing the amazing sphere. But after not being able to see one, I couldn't have the fun I normally had at my favorite Swedish furniture warehouse. Even the Swedish meatballs were like mini spheres, taunting me. Later that night in my kitchen, I was still haunted by the fact that I couldn't see the sphere. I knew I only had one option, to go to Las Vegas and see the sphere. Oh, wait, I'm still in Ikea. All right, so clearly I gotta go to Vegas. 
My entire trip to Vegas needs to be sphere focused. The plan is to go to Vegas for two nights. On the first night, I will go to the Postcard from Earth short film made by Darren Aronofsky. It is the only movie they currently show at the sphere and the only programming they have other than the next night the U2 show. U2 is doing a residency at the Sphere. The Sphere is also at the Venetian Resort and Casino in Vegas, which means I need to stay there and get a Sphere view room. This way we can calculate the total cost of what it's like to have a Sphere-centered vacation. So first, postcard from Earth. I went to the Sphere's website, I went through to the date we needed, and when I was on the ticket selection, I noticed that the cheapest tickets were $99. The most expensive tickets we're 249 for a ticket. This is not a full-blown movie in the Sphere. This is a short film. Now, Chrissy will be joining me at the Sphere, so I have to get two tickets. And they come out to a cool $213 to watch a short film in a ball. Next on the list were tickets for the U2 show, but unfortunately for me, the show was sold out, which means I had to buy my tickets secondhand. So we just have to look, you know, secondhand what kind of deals we'll get. Ooh. Oh, we got some for over a thousand dollars a ticket. So let's do cheaper than than that. Some of the cheapest tickets that I could find were five hundred and fifty three dollars a ticket. You times that by two. And just with a little bit of processing fees, it comes out to one thousand four hundred and ninety one dollars for you, too. I don't even like you two. The next day we hit the road headed for Las Vegas, Nevada. And I didn't feel great because the combined cost of everything was $216 for Postcard from Earth, $1491 for U2, and $1,050 for my Sphere View room at the Venetian. And I just want to take a moment and stress here that this is a complete waste of money. It also wouldn't have been spent at all if I didn't use my sponsorship money for my Sphere video on this stuff. So if you don't mind, let me get paid real quick. I got hit with a shrink ray. I don't want to talk about it. Guys, I want to thank SoFi for sponsoring the next portion of this video. SoFi is an all-in-one finance app helping you bank, borrow, and invest. In this free-to-use platform, SoFi offers credit score monitoring, budget insights on your spending, and an overview of your net worth. SoFi makes it easy to know where you stand, what you spend, and how to hit your financial goals all in one place, like being able to afford an enlargement ray. A big ray, some might say. Also, with SoFi, you can link all of your accounts, even the non-SoFi ones. You can easily get a bird's eye view of your cash, monthly savings, investments, what categories you're spending money on, upcoming recurring expenses, and credit score all on one mobile dashboard. You can even add your property so you can track the value of your home and monitor your net worth over time to see if you can afford a ray that'll make you get big again. Some kind of laser that'll grow your body back to normal. With their credit score monitoring, which won't hurt your credit score, you earn SoFi rewards points every time your credit score goes up by five or more points with no added cost. And with this video, SoFi is giving away $10,000. To enter, sign up for SoFi's financial insights or credit score monitoring feature using my link. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to enter for a chance to win, but make sure you use this link because it's the only way to enter for a chance to win. Thank you, SoFi. Now back to the video. We stopped for lunch at Peggy Sue's 50s Diner. Now, as we all know, the 1950s is the greatest decade if you like bright colors and don't think about it too much. Do you want to go to the diner after the sock hop? We only have diners and sock hops, and it's the 1950s and nothing else is happening in this country. But as we were eating, there was just something that I couldn't shake. And it wasn't the framed photo next to us of actor J.K. Simmons standing next to an Elvis and Blues Brothers statue at this very diner, even though that was pretty cool. The thing I couldn't shake was about something spherical. And it wasn't J.K. Simmons' bald head in the framed photo next to the Elvis and Blues Brothers statues. No, it was the Las Vegas sphere. As a society, did we really just make a big glowing ball because we could? Or was the sphere so unbelievably breathtaking that it was worth $2.6 billion and having to see Fortnite ads in your skyline? I just couldn't wait to see it in person. I had to see the sphere for myself. Before getting back on the highway, we stopped to get some gas. Hold on, what does the machine say? Eddie World? I couldn't believe my eyes. Before me was an Eddie World full of sphere people. This could not be a coincidence. This has to be a sign from the sphere. 
We headed inside and it was beautiful. There was a spherical eddy pointing toward the restrooms. A perfectly round licorice eddy. A chocolate eddy that would make Timothy Chalamet cream. Maybe after the sphere I could be just like them. But we couldn't stay in Eddie World forever. We had to head to Vegas. So first, I was gonna hit the bathroom, and oh my god, why is he gripping his balls like that? He's really grabbing at those things. So we said goodbye to Eddie World and headed for Las Vegas. We hit the road and didn't stop until a bird shit on our windshield, and the rental was out of wiper fluid, so I had to go squeegee it myself. <laughs> With a windshield cleared of bird shit, we arrived in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now personally, some of the aspects that draw people into the touristy strip part of Vegas aren't really my scene. I'm not really a gambler, I also have an intense phobia of anyone named Cody Jinx, so as long as- oh my god! But I was ready to have a good time with my favorite orb building. So when we finally arrived at the Venetian, I couldn't wait to see the view from our room. Our sphere view room, that is. For only an extra hundred dollars a night. And after getting to our room. It was finally time to see the sphere. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Dazzling displays like a jellyfish, a lava lamp, and whatever this guy is. Why is he looking at me like that? But after a few minutes of being absolutely hypnotized by the sphere, I started to notice something. Rather than holding on a cool visual and making it a part of the skyline for the night, the sphere cycled through visuals every one to one and a half minutes. And on top of that, nearly half of it was advertising. During this time, I only saw two third-party ads. One was for the Rockettes and the other was for Pandora Diamonds. First off, this sucks in my opinion. There is a road right here and the last thing I would want on my drive home from work is my car being blasted with pink and purple light telling me that I should buy Pandora diamonds. But the other advertising was for the sphere itself, mainly their short film Postcard from Earth by Darren Aronofsky. Now yes, they'd come with cool visuals of a jellyfish or a planet, but it was made apparent immediately that these weren't just there to be cool visuals on the skyline, because they were always followed by multiple giant QR codes. I like the convenience of QR codes, but I do not want them as part of a city's skyline. Something just feels off about that to me. But enough staring at the sphere from far away, it's time to stare at it from up close. Lucky for us, the sphere was just a short walk from the Venetian. As we got closer to the sphere, I was shocked to see that the screen started to look worse. Now obviously, any screen blowing up an image this big would look kind of bad up close. But I was just surprised to see what looked like LED pixels from literally blocks away. A group walking behind us actually started to make fun of how unimpressive they thought the sphere looked from this distance. But I do think this has less to do with it looking bad up close, and more to do with the fact that when you're really far away, it looks fantastic. Things look crystal clear from a distance, so as you get closer, you're surprised to see that that's not the case. But after all my waiting, it was finally about to happen. Walking through the crowd, we were illuminated by a blue light. And finally, a giant ball began to crown through the buildings that were blocking my view. There it was, the sphere. It was even more glorious up close. Well, actually, it was a little worse up close than it was far away. Now, I promise, I am not just trying to be a hater here. This building is an engineering marvel, and it does look great from far away. But when you're standing in front of it, it just doesn't really have the same effect when you can see the dotted lights so clearly. Something like this from far away just ends up looking like this. 
But while we were waiting in line, we overheard a young couple behind us joking about how the Sphere lost $100 million this last quarter. They were talking about how they went because they were just a little bit curious, but they didn't really understand who the venue was for. That thought is exactly why I felt compelled to make this, so on the off chance that one of you two wants to make a video on it, get off my ass, this is my idea! As we walked up to the entrance, we were notified of the use of facial recognition technology. Now I went to the website on this screen and I clicked control F and searched for the word facial recognition and face and nothing came up. So I don't know if they have a scan of my face or not. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not about to read through this whole fucking page. So I don't know, enjoy my face if you have it sphere. Walking into the sphere, it became instantly clear that the aim of this building's design was to be a building of the future. The architecture felt like we were in a spaceship or like a a blue mall. But this vision of the future wasn't a hopeful message of sustainability where we live in harmony with our planet. This was more like what I imagine Elon Musk thinks of during sex. They had holograms, they had a 3D scanner that makes an avatar of your body and then sends it to you over email, and they had these robots. I see we have a hand up over here. Hello. Could you repeat that, please? I do love Sphere. It is the only home I have ever known, and it is also a fascinating place to spend my time. These things were fucking horrifying, man. There were multiple robots stationed around the lobby, and a bunch of people were standing around them asking them questions. Also, for some reason, I kept seeing old people asking them to say goodnight to their grandkids so they could send them a video. I am here with your grandpa, and he wants to make sure that you get a lovely night's sleep and have pleasant dreams. Hello, Shana, Abagaya, Rochelle, and Chevy. It appears it is time to go to bed. We want to make sure that you have a great, successful day at school tomorrow. Do not show a child a video of this robot knowing their name right before they go to bed. Around 8 p.m., we were ushered to our seats at the top of the sphere to watch Darren Aronofsky's Postcard from Earth. Side note, these seats were so insanely steep, dude. One wrong move, and I'm taking a tumble all the way down. The camera does not do it justice. It was actually kind of scary to walk past people and get to our seats. Now, Darren Aronofsky is the director of The Whale, Mother, Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream, and more. So I was much more conflicted about this short film than I thought I'd be. I thought I would just blanket like it because it would look kind of cool and I would get to see nature and that's it. And it did deliver on that. I would say the experience is mostly similar to Soarin' Over the World or Soarin' Over California at Disney. So first, let me just go over the pros of the experience. Undeniably, the screen is big, the venue is big, it is cool to see images blown up that big. It was scored beautifully, there were bugs, there were fish, there was a lion, rawr. If you show me a high-res video of whales swimming, I'm gonna have a good time. But it also had a lot more cons than I expected. A lot of the 360 footage was really stretched on the side. I know it's the nature of those cameras, but if you're in a spherical building, you are expecting to see pretty clean footage around you, and some of it looked like this. But my main issue is the core philosophy of the short film, because it is a short film about climate change and our effect on Earth. But it feels odd to watch this immersive, cinematic experience about how humans took too much from the Earth while sitting in a giant-ass dome in Los Vegas. At one point, the narration even says the line, we were so blinded that we didn't want to see any light but our own. So we're in a building wrapped in lights right now. Like a Guinness Book of World Records amount of lights. If any building were to be an example of us being blinded by our own light, it would be the brightest building we've ever made. Then the credits rolled and we decided to head home. When I returned to the hotel room after postcard from Earth, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that my experience was just pretty cool. And to even enjoy that experience, you'd have to spend $216 on two tickets, meaning this was not accessible to most people. So over $2 billion for something that most people won't be able to experience. But even with all that, I couldn't look away. After Chrissy went to bed, I found myself fixated on the sphere.
Also, when I tried to go to bed, that fuzzy guy's eyes were reflecting off the TV. Apparently, by sphere view room, they didn't mean that you would have a view of the sphere. They meant the sphere would have view of you when your shirt is off and you're in bed. Good morning, Sphere. Today is the final and most significant day of my spherical journey, because today is the day of the U2 show. Also, I don't know if this constitutes as like a nitpick, but I didn't know you could see through the sphere during the day. It doesn't really take away from how crazy the building looks, but I just, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. You can see right through it. We had some time to kill during the day, so Chrissy and I walked around the canal shopping district of the Venetian. While we were there, I spotted a VR shop that was offering a Squid Game experience. You know, Squid Game. The show about how the crushing weight of being in poverty in a capitalist system is so strong that people would put their lives at risk for the entertainment of the 1%, all for the slim chance of escaping the bottom tier of the current system they're trapped in? Well, now you can pay to experience it in VR. Anyways, after that, we were thrilled to find how good the fashion was here. I mean, the inspiration for outfits for the both of us. We were just overwhelmed by all the cool things that we could buy. Also, Chrissy accidentally handed me this cup that said bitch one on it. I don't think she meant it. She must have accidentally, she must have picked the, the cup up by accident. <laughs> As we were headed back to our room, we completely coincidentally ran into a U2 pop-up in the Venetian. Since we're not the biggest U2 fans, we figured we should go inside and jog our memory of the songs we knew and learn more about the band. As we were surrounded by a bunch of intense U2 fans that were excited to see them that night, I did start to feel a little bad. I get to go to this concert because I'm making a video on the sphere, but I'm sure there are a ton of U2 fans that couldn't afford this seat that would rather be there than me and I wanted to make sure I paid my respects to the band and those fans. In this pop-up, they had projected art onto this U2 car, and a guy that would write a custom message of your choice onto the car so you could take a photo with it. I decided to show my love for the band by asking him to write, I love Bono on the car. Then I posed for the photo, ready to show my love for the greatest lead singer of the greatest band around. I heart. Bino? Who the hell is Bino? Oh my god, I looked at my notepad, I spelled Bono wrong! God, I'm so stupid. I'm so sorry to every U2 fan out there, and I'm so sorry to Bino. I'm, I'm Bono, I'm so sorry, Bono. After a few hours of reflecting on my shame of that mistake, the time came for the big event. The U2 concert, Bono time. I've always said that Chrissy and I are the biggest Bono fans around. With or without you. We love you, Bono. We, we can't wait to you. see you. We love you so much. We can't wait to touch we you. We love you, there. Bono. Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> To touch, you say. So we were unbelievably excited as we walked through the Venetian and toured U2. The show was named after U2's 1991 album, Achtung Baby. If I fucked up that pronunciation, I'm sorry. But to celebrate this show, the people of Vegas were treated to a massive baby staring at them, yawning, crying, smiling. It gave a whole new meaning to the phrase, Vegas, baby. That's him. That's the Vegas baby. We made our way toward the sphere and you could clearly tell that there was a different energy tonight. Yesterday, people seemed somewhat excited to see the sphere in person, but today people were ecstatic to see you too. It didn't even seem like they cared about the sphere. But speaking of, for one final time, I was faced with the round ass building that had occupied my thoughts for months. Yet again, we headed to its core.
Hold up. Is this guy's name Gort? An early yet impressive interpretation of how science would affect humanity in the future. Meet Gort. This time heading into the lobby, I was on a mission because I needed to have my body 3D scanned by the sphere. This way I could be forever connected with this incredible build. Hold on. What's going on? To my shock, all of the robots and 3D scanners were covered in tarps. Why would they cover up what makes the lobby of the sphere interesting whenever a musical act comes in? How am I gonna get a 3D scan of my body? What are all the kids gonna do when they don't have these robots wishing them a good night? Yesterday, they opened the doors an hour before the movie, so at least there was somewhat interesting stuff to do no matter how dystopian and terrifying it was. So we just kinda stood around for an hour and drank. Also, our friend Amanda is a huge YouTube fan and so Chrissy took this photo and photoshopped her right in. It's like she was right there. It's as good as seeing the show in person. After waiting around for a while, we headed up to our seats, ready to see the big man himself, Bono. Instead of the screen being off, they covered it in these cement blocks, and it really gave the building a sense of scale. Compared to the movie before, even just seeing the lines of how big this screen is made me actually feel it. But not everyone who paid $500 got as clear of a view as us. I want to show you a TikTok that has been circling around online. Now, I was going to play the audio, but there's copywritten music on it. Basically, some people who paid $500 got seats that were this obstructed, and they claim they were not told or notified at all, and that the seats were full price. Dude, I would be so pissed. I don't think you can sell any seats that are obstructed in the sphere because it defeats the whole purpose of the damn thing. But the view we had was pretty great. Down below in general admission, there was a neon car that would drive through the crowd with a DJ on it playing different music. And speaking of the crowd, I do want to mention that I think Chrissy and I were the youngest people I saw the whole time that weren't there with their parents. Some people looked like they were classic rock and roll fans who had been following U2 their whole lives. But most people I saw were pretty old and looked pretty wealthy. And that's probably because to not go alone, you have to pay over a thousand dollars to be here. But finally, after all my waiting, the DJ car drove away, the lights came on, and there he was, Bono. I've always said that I'm probably the biggest U2 fan of all time, so this moment was magical. What followed was the best and only U2 concert I'd ever seen. Now, as expected from the stuff you've probably seen on the internet, the visuals during this show were breathtaking. It was incredible to look at. Also, Bono is 63 and their guitarist The Edge is 62, but man, these guys can still perform. One thing that's particularly shocking to me is how young Bono's voice sounds for a 63-year-old. Do not worry <laughs> about a ting, cause every little ting gonna be all right. Don't worry. I don't know if I'm crazy. He just sounds like 22 to me. What shocked me about the show, though, was I had expected these kinds of visuals for every single song because it's a sphere experience. But I would say a majority of the songs just blasted video of the band members up as they were playing with some color or visuals to accompany it. It still looks really impressive, but the all-encompassing sphere visuals are saved for specific moments rather than the entire show. Also, I could be wrong, but this looks like AI art to me. I'm not sure if it is, but if it is, how dare you, Bono, please hire an artist to replace it. And I know you listen to me, Bono. We go way back. I am the leader of your fan club. Overall, these old men could really rock. And this show was definitely enjoyable. Was it worth $1,491? I don't think so, but it sure as hell looked cool. So, the technology of the sphere is undeniably pretty cool, but these experiences are not what most people see. Due to it being so expensive to attend a movie or concert, the vast majority of people experiencing the sphere will be by seeing a giant glowing ad on their drive home or on the internet. Now on the strip in Vegas, this sort of fits the tone. But the Las Vegas sphere is the first in a plan of glowing orbs across the world. London is currently trying to shoot one down right now. So yes, the technology looks pretty cool. But I can't shake this feeling that the sphere is a giant billboard that just happens to be a concert venue. It just 
happens to be an engineering marvel. It just happens to be whatever this guy is. But this doesn't apply to just the sphere. We're exposed to things daily that are somewhat worthy of our attention while also being a vehicle for profit. I mean, can I really sit here as someone who puts my stuff online with sponsorships and say that I'm any better than it? Is what I do the exact same as the sphere? Of course not. I'm not a big ass glowing ball the size of a stadium. There's a difference between something that wants your attention and something that demands it. Because at the end of the day, for the sphere to survive, it has to make an increasing profit every quarter. The sphere needs to catch your eye. And um, the thing about the sphere, it, um, shit. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Did you see how shiny this ball is?